clean. Mm. Absolutely. I wonder whether, and if you have a look at the fine detail of the story, there's plenty of fruit in the household. That's being chucked out. Mm. I wonder whether, through sheer guilt, families, you know, put in the fruit bowl, the apples and the oranges and the bananas to make them feel good, yeah. but then they don't eat that sort of stuff. They go out a little bit more and they throw it out until the bugs come along, you know? I would expect nothing less from a man who sat on this couch, ladies and gentlemen, and drank my coffee. <laughs> as soon as he arrived. That's what he did. He sat down, he drank my coffee. Finish it off. Helen, are you conscious of how uh, much you throw? Yeah, I am too. I, I don't like throwing out food at all, and um, I do a fair bit of it, because I think I'm going to stay home for the week and cook meals and uh, have a normal uh, existence. I don't. I usually end up um, dropping into friends or going out and then or not eating anything when I get home, because I get home late after work. So I throw out a reasonable amount. I also think I think, though, that if you're buying fruit and vegetables in the supermarkets these days, a lot of them are crap. So you get them home, they last a day, or you take one bite into a yeah. peach, it tastes like crap, mm. and so you find yourself just whacking it in the bin in frustration that you've mm. just spent, I don't know how much, because the, the fruit's really expensive these yeah. days, uh, because it's not good quality and you're being duped by it looking yeah. nice in little packages yeah. in, the, in the supermarket. So I think that's a real genuine and, issue And the well. supermarkets got caught out uh, two months yes. ago, remember that? Yes, they do. They got caught out because of the time, sometimes nine months, between picking a piece of fruit off a tree oh. and getting it on uh, you know, the you fruit shelf. And you sort of think shelf. that when you buy it, and then when you take that bite into it and it's yeah. awful and you yeah. throw it out, you just think yeah. you've been you duped know. again. Yes, yeah, so Helen yeah. Wellings. Did it. That's right. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, here we go. Finally, latest figures from the Bureau of Statistics have found men don't spend any longer a day on domestic duties than they did 15 years ago. Take shot of Chris. While women have <laughs> only scaled back their chores by 10 minutes a day. Take shot of Helen. <laughs> Helen, do you think women still do the lion's share of domestic duties around? Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to be particularly surprised by these statistics. Even Chris is not going to be surprised by these statistics. I'm it's very just, surprised. It's it's just a fact of life that women are going to want things to be neater and tidier and the linen to be changed and the washing to be done and the silks to be separated from the cottons and the whites and the, and the colours. I, I don't think it's surprising. The, what was the statistic we were talking about before? Five minutes is spent by men washing, ironing and mending. But I've we're working. But hang on, Ellen, we are working. Hey, I don't mend anything either. <laughs> Who darns no, socks now? No one darns socks. No. We are working double the time as women. <clears throat> That's the statistic from the Bureau. They're saying we're working double the time. Oh, so that men spend double the amount of time working in paid work. In paid work. That's a very important statistic. And just to keep up with prices and fruit, and uh, that's what they're doing. They're working really hard. Uh, you know, I think that's legitimate. I do, but, uh, but there's also been a report out this week about, <laughs> what about women with children who are part-time in the workplace are the most stressed people in the, in the country at the moment. And, I, yeah. and the ones that I know, that's exactly the case. It's hard women to be a got, super mum. Hard to be a super They mom. are definitely the most stressed. I don't know. Stressed. I know about those our infomercials. We've got guys with the swivel sweepers. I only, I only ever yes. see guys doing it. Yes, and, and they do it particularly well. Yeah, they the do. Swivels. The laundry is a frightening place, though, Larry, as you know. I wouldn't know. I've, I, I've, I wouldn't know. Well, you could get electrocuted on the, on the, yes. in the dryer. You could lose your hand How in the washing machine. How much time do you think you spend doing domestic chores? <laughs> I do. I look after the kitchen. So that's about and the 10 minutes in the morning. And the statistics you do a little bit more in the kitchen anyway, yeah. <laughs> they have got the greatest collection of paper plates you've ever seen in that house. <laughs> he, does, um, he does the eating in the yeah, kitchen, that's what he does. It's fine for you to come in here, sit on this couch, drink my coffee, light Kylie's fuse, get her all cranky, then go. I've got another 51 minutes of this, mate. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you love it. Good to see you guys. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you much. Over. I think we got through lots then. <laughs> Thanks. Later this hour, should you apologise even if you've done nothing wrong? We'll get some relationships advice from Joe Lamble. But first, uh, talking about domestic duties, this is what Kylie was talking yeah. about. It's over to Glenn. Blokes doing it. Soon we're going to be talking about apologising in marriages. Yes. And I promised you more of Margie from Victoria's points about females. And we make the rules in the household. Item number four. Right. If a female suspects the male knows all the rules, she must immediately change some of the rules. Item five, the female is never wrong. Very important to remember that. <laughs> Item six, mm. if it appears the female is wrong, it is obviously because of some, some flagrant misunderstanding caused by something the male did or said wrong. If rule six applies, the male must apologise immediately for causing the misunderstanding. We're up to the seven. We need, we, we, can we put this on the website? We apologies. need to put this on the chat room. Yeah. Do we have that technology? Yeah, we're talking right. apologies very soon with Joe Lample. All right, Michael is in soon also with some juicy office gossip and poor Kylie's fallen victim yet again. <laughs> what have I done now? Don't worry straight, about it. Straight after the break, Marlene gets a morning show makeover for a very special cause. Don't miss it. It's fantastic. <laughs> Anticipate.
occupation is building. 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. <laughs> just, just with a tent. It's taken nearly 40 years of careful grooming, but today our makeover candidate is parting with one of her favourite assets, all for a good cause. Well, we know uh, charity begins at home, but Marlene, though, is taking uh, that to great lengths. Listen to her story. I've been growing my hair since I was about seven years old and in that time I've only ever had trims to keep it healthy. Never a proper cut, um, it's never been dyed or permed. It's just under a metre long now when it's loose and I can sit on it. My mum had really long hair when she was a young girl as well. I decided that it was time to have it cut about a year ago and at first I thought I'd just sell it to wig people but then I realised that maybe I could raise some money for a good cause. Everyone seems to be touched by cancer in some way. My mother is a survivor after being treated for cervical cancer in 76. Both my grandfathers and one of my grandmothers died from cancer. I have a stepsister battling at the moment. Also extended family members, friends and just people I know have fought this disease with varying degrees of success. I'm a little nervous about having it all chopped off, but I'm looking forward to raising lots of money for a good cause. There needs to be greater awareness as well on how important early detection is. My mum wouldn't be here today otherwise. We will meet a short-haired Marlene in just a tick. But first, we're joined by her sister Shirley, our beauty expert Maddie Semai, and hair stylist David Moore from Gloss Salon. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, Shirley, you nominated Marlene. Uh, you haven't seen her with short hair for many decades. I've never known her not to have Is that right? Never, never? Never. Yeah. Wow. wow. I, was five. She, I was five when she had her first <coughs> haircut, really, and I don't remember that. So she has always... So you're feeling a little yeah. bit nervous for her now? Yes. Well, she's obviously become so attached to it. Maddie, yeah. can you run us through the beauty treatments that you shouted, Marlene? Yes, Marlene's got great hair, and I have to say she's got the most incredible eyebrows I've ever seen. Very dark and thick, so she'd never shaped them before. It was the first time that we've shaped them for her to open up her eyes. She was concerned with some congestion around her chin. We gave her an AHA peel, followed by an Omnilux treatment, just to hydrate the skin and give her a nice, deep, cleansed skin. And then we gave her an anti-aging manicure with a neck and shoulder massage, just to prepare her before her haircut. We wanted her to be extremely <laughs> relax before she gets the haircut and uh, we finish off the makeover with a medium tan. Okay, you didn't want to freak her out <laughs> with her hair. David, you're in the hair business, mate. Like, looking at 40 years of hair, are you mindful of just how important, how historical, valuable that is? 20 years of hairdressing and I've never ever seen hair in that that kind of condition that long. Yeah. Usually it's a, frayed, it's a frayed mess. Did she take a big deep breath, did she, before you <laughs> Look, I mean, it's a hugely emotional thing to have to yeah. go through. I mean, we had to we had to deep cleanse and and really sort of get rid of the impurities in the hair, and then she she was holding back some tears and we started to um, to braid it and then and then cut it off. Yeah. We had to cut it off very sort of close to the scalp. I mean, we left pretty much not more than around three inches of hair all over the head, and her hair was a meter long. Oh, okay. Uh, well, just, it was huge. It, I was I, I I I was gobsmacked. I was really, really proud of it. I was, I was. It was amazing. It was amazing. All right. amazing. It sounds very brave on everybody's part. Let's now see the result. Marlene, come on out. There you are. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, come and sit down with us. Here we go. It's actually a bit dark, go. I can't really see her all that well. Come over, come over and we'll have a big chat. Okay. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> oh, there yeah, we so, go. Look at you. Oh, Fantastic. God. Was that the first time? Oh, God. <laughs> Was that the first time in 40 years you've been able to spin around without something hitting you in the face five minutes later? <laughs> yes. I, I, when we sat on the plane coming up, um, I flicked it and it straightened your <laughs> Oh, wow. And how do you, do you feel naked? How do you feel? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, and yeah, it is a naked feeling. It's when people looked at me before, it was just, they were looking at the hair, so yeah. I wasn't there. They didn't yeah. see the real you. Shirley, no. you, you, you're about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> this is monumental, isn't it? We can't be light. We can't be light or flippant about this. Forty years of hair gone. It is. Yeah. What do you think?